Good morning, everyone. I wanted to share how my Ohio gardens are doing here in the middle of July after a somewhat rocky start to the gardening season. But today, I thought I'd throw a little pinch of reality into the garden tour. Every year in the garden is a little different, and this year I have felt behind the eight ball since the very beginning of the season. Critters and wacky weather plagued the gardens from the start, and then I got behind on my regular mulching, and the weeds took full advantage of that. My gardens were in desperate need of some TLC. But rather than do all the cleanup and then just show you guys the finished, somewhat pristine result, I thought I would try to share more of the befores and afters so that you guys can actually see what my garden looks like when I run out of time and energy, something I'm sure that a lot of you can probably relate to. So let's jump into the nitty gritty. First thing I'm gonna throw out here today, I highly recommend everyone get a bird's eye view of your gardens, if you can. Drone shots are awesome, or in my case, I propped a ladder up against the barn. I find the aerial view helps me to see the bigger picture and stops me from fretting over all the little stuff, quite literally getting me out of the weeds. Now for those of you who have been following along with my garden progress for a couple of years, you may notice that this entryway to the garden is new. I built this area out this spring and my husband constructed this super heavy duty garden gate. This is really nice because it's plenty wide so that I'm able to get wagons and wheelbarrows and whatever else I need into the garden easily. I've also got this cattle panel arch planted with hyacinth beans, so I'm really excited for when this all fills out. And I will say, this is probably the most empty my garden has ever been in July. A lot of my spring planted crops have just recently come out and I'm trying to be very intentional with keeping spaces open for my fall crops this year. into this front garden area, which eventually I plan to be my medicinal herb garden. In here right now, I do have a few herbs, volunteer flowers, raspberries, tomatoes, and cucumbers. Tomatoes got a late start this year, but they are loving this warmer weather we're having. The downfall of growing cucumbers on my fence. You'll see this white coating on a lot of my cucurbits as well as grapes in my garden. This is surround. It's a finely ground kaolin clay that is mixed with water and sprayed to coat plants. It helps deter many insects, helps reduce sun damage and heat stress, and protects from some diseases. Now I've mentioned that I use Surround in a couple of other videos and I've had quite a few questions on it. So I am hoping to make a dedicated video on this product soon, kind of what it is, how I use it, and some of the pros and cons of using it. Now over to exhibit number one of before and after. This front corner of the garden was a thistle patch just a few days ago. I had to get in here and hand pull everything because I've got strawberries growing in here. And I'm trying something a little different this time. Typically, these weeds would go straight into the compost pile, but I'm making weed tea with these. I fill a bucket with the thistles and other weeds, cover it with water, and let it steep till the liquid becomes slightly bubbly and stinky. I tried this once before earlier this season and used that liquid to water my peppers. I didn't do any legitimate testing, like you know, setting out a control and comparing it to the weed tea. But I can say that it didn't hurt the peppers, and it was kind of fun to do, so I'm trying it again. Now for the after. I hate pulling thistles, but now I can actually see the plants that are growing in here. I just got done cleaning out a lot of cool season plants from these raised beds, carrots, lettuce, cabbage. I just seeded this area with buckwheat cover crop.
The end of this bed was being taken over by Yarrow. I love Yarrow, but it is quite aggressive and this was not the right spot for it. Plus, it was smothering out this poor little rhubarb plant. I had to wait to dig the Yarrow out because a sweet little family of song sparrows had made a nest here. I waited till the babies all fledged, then cut this back using the cuttings as mulch and dug out the plants. You can see this wonderful fibrous root system, which helps make Yarrow such a tough plant. I transplanted these to the outside of the garden fence with hopes that they will outcompete the weeds around the perimeter fence. So now this bed is mostly cleaned out. I've got some ground cherries in here, a few carrots left, uproar rosinia and hyacinth bean. And I'm trying to nurse this poor rhubarb back to health. Now another after and before back in this space. I'm going to be replacing this raised bed after these elderberry cuttings are done. And I've kind of been neglecting this whole area. The path was overgrown with weeds, so I had to hoe, cover with cardboard, and re-mulch. My blackberry bed was overgrown with weeds too, to the point where it was hard to access the plants. I cleaned this up and mulched with grass clippings. I'll have space in here for fall plantings and easier access to all those berries. In this bed, one of my favorite peppers, Mad Hatter, and some pink buckwheat. This stuff is so pretty when it blooms. And tucked back behind are some butternut squash, which I'll train up the fence. Gooseberry and borage in this bed. This was the bed I used for my carrot seeding test. I just cleared most of this out last night in preparation for repeating this test in my summer planting. Up here we've got Top Chop Collards. This variety always performs beautifully for me. Nightfall Shell Beans. Look at how much these have grown in just the five days since I initially shot this video. Tomatillos. Queenie Lime Orange Zinnias. Volunteer Borage and Quirk Mini Cucumbers. These were a hit with the kids last year. Bolted Broccoli, Dill and Nicotiana. The evening fragrance of these flowers is amazing. and loads of black currants that I need to get picked. And just a peek at the rainbow lights charred because they are so pretty. Wild violet petunias here. I just stuck a few very late planted sweet potato slips in that empty spot. And this dino melon, more incredible growth. I initially filmed this last Friday. Now, a week later, look at these plants. It's amazing what an inch of rain can do. More sweet potatoes over here. I have no idea if I'll end up with a harvest on these. I planted them over a month later than I normally would. Now back to what was probably the most neglected area of my garden. My poor tomatoes were really struggling back there. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Taranzi.
Now, in addition to cleaning up the garden, I've got tons of bigger cleanup jobs to do around the property. Taranzi's six inch mini chainsaw has been a game changer for those tasks that don't require the bulk of a full size chainsaw. Lightweight, less than two pounds, and easy to operate with one hand, it lets me tackle things like tree trimming. In this case, a quince whose top growth died over the winter, or the dreaded invasive honeysuckle that is intent on choking out our woods. I really appreciate that those lithium batteries have a nice long life. They last around 45 minutes. And for longer jobs, I can just swap it out with the bonus battery and keep on working. With the Taranzi chainsaw, you also get these bonuses, all included in this heavy duty storage case. There are two lithium batteries with the battery charger, screwdriver, safety gloves, an extra chain, an oil bottle, and safety glasses. It's definitely a handy tool to own, and Taranzi provides a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you are interested in your own Taranzi mini chainsaw, simply click on the link in the video description below. Now, back to the gardening. So here is the before. Weeds were out competing my plants. I could barely find my tomatoes for the mess. So major cleanup was in order. Once most of the weeds were cleared out, I pruned and trellised my tomatoes and sprayed them with a natural biofungicide to help strengthen the plant's natural immune response. Next, I mulched heavily around the plants with grass clippings to help retain soil moisture and prevent more weeds from popping up. Then I laid down cardboard in the walkway to smother the weeds. Eventually, I'll top that cardboard with wood chips. So here we've got the after. I'm testing out composting in place this year, so I've got a compost pile started directly in the garden, as compared to my others, which are outside of the garden. Potatoes up front here, and then my cleaned up tomato area. These tomato plants appear to be much happier now. Over in this row, I've got celeriac, just starting to bulb up. More Nicotiana, Kelvin celery, and this is really interesting. This parsley looks okay now, getting ready to bolt, but healthy. But this was not the case just a few weeks ago. It had a nasty infestation of winged aphids. But since they seem to be congregating just on these plants, I decided to leave this alone as a trap crop of sorts. Over the course of two weeks, I watched the adult lady beetles move in, followed by lots of pupae and larvae. The hungry, hungry larvae made short work of those aphids, and now these plants are completely clean. And now I've got a large population of beneficial insects to patrol the rest of the garden. This is a big reason why I don't always reach for insecticides immediately in my garden. More winter squash here. Again, these have grown massively in just a week. I had to take the covers off yesterday. Dwarf sunflowers. I just harvested the garlic from this area. I was testing out soaking garlic bulbs before planting, and much to my surprise, the preliminary results seemed to show that the soaking did in fact help to increase the overall size of my bulbs, which I did not expect. But I'll be doing a bit more formal testing this fall to assuage my own doubts. 
I just seeded this area in buckwheat cover crop. More potatoes here. Potatoes and onions are really behind in maturity this year. Cauliflower was here. I pulled those plants and also seeded this in buckwheat. Beets are slowly coming out. I've harvested a lot of the larger beets and will pick the smaller ones over the next couple weeks. <laughs> Gotta love these volunteer sunflowers. This area was a later planting of broccoli. These weren't quite as nice as my early plantings, but I still got a pretty decent harvest. Now this is planted in buckwheat as well. Beans are coming on strong. I've already picked two bushels with no end in sight. The last of the kohlrabi. Here I've got a millet, cowpea, and annual ryegrass cover crop that I'm testing. Ruby Dawn tomatoes. This is a determinate variety. I've got to get these pruned up a little. One of my favorites, Verde de Taglio chard. And more carrots ready for picking. And onions, you can see how far behind these are, primarily due to weather. Normally, I'd be harvesting at this time from an early spring planting, but these are barely bulbing up. My eggplant, coated with surround to try to deter the flea beetles. You can see all the damage on these leaves, but fruit is starting to form. Assorted cantaloupe and melons under this netting. Tiger eye shell beans and Jing orange okra. I just got this area mulched with grass clippings. Peppers, cucumbers. Again, look at the change in just a week's time here. And on the west side, I've got Jerusalem artichoke planted. I didn't plant it this way, but it does give the cucumbers a nice little break from that intense late afternoon sun. And I'm testing out a planting of tiller radish around my cukes because so many of you swore that radishes helped repel your cucumber beetles. More peppers and more cover crop. And now we'll head out of the main garden. This is a volunteer. It's a native field thistle, and it was just so impressive I let it grow. Unlike other invasive thistles, it is relatively well behaved and an important plant for pollinators. It's a great source for late summer nectar. The new strawberry plantings are doing well. around to the northeast corner of the gardens. 
I've got one of my peach trees and this wall of elderberries, which saved my garden from damage earlier this season. I shared a post a while back expressing my frustration with a spray applicator applying herbicide during sustained winds of 15 to 20 miles per hour, blowing straight towards my garden. We're fairly protected back here, but unfortunately the wind was carrying the spray drift straight through this break in our tree line from the field clear across the street. It got one of our pine trees, but it appears most of the drift hit these elderberries. You can see some of the damage here, still in the form of these curled leaves. But the grapes got the worst of it, as grapes are highly susceptible to herbicide damage. These strange deformed leaves are indicative of drift damage. These grapes actually sustained the same damage last year, but at the time I didn't realize that this is what was causing the deformities. My goal is to increase the density of our wind block planting along that east side of the house over the next several years to help provide more of a barricade. I'm just glad that these plants took the brunt of the damage this time. Here's Hugoculture bed number one. This is pretty empty right now with the exception of this apricot tree as I'm planning on planting this out with perennials this fall. On to Hugoculture bed number two. I had to update this footage because when I first shot this video a week ago, the sunflowers weren't in full bloom yet, and now they are. Most of these sunflowers, with the exception of the Rouge Royale variety, are volunteers. I love that deep color of the Rouge Royale, but it's hard to capture on video. I'll pop a still photo up here so you can see it a little better. I'm working on creating an assorted perennial bed here. Horseradish, hascap tucked in, strawberries as the ground cover. More yarrow that I need to move. and raspberries, which I need to build a support for. And I transplanted my grape that refused to die to this cattle panel trellis. Look at all those weeds. I really need to cover crop this. And here's that flashback to a week ago. You can really see the difference in the amount of bloom here. Another mess I need to tackle. And the last veggie garden bed. This is my overwintered potato experiment. I can't wait to dig these and see what I end up with. Watermelon and a late planting of sweet corn. Also with a lot of weeds to tackle in here. And just as an aside, the gardens I've just shown you are where 98% of my time and energy go. I haven't even shown you the beds around the house, currently filled with weeds and plants my dogs have killed. 
just in case anybody needs to feel better about their own landscaping. <laughs> And now let's take a quick jaunt over to my mom and dad's place. For anyone new to the channel, I garden over here as well. But these beautiful beds up front are all my mom's doing. I just always have to show them because I love them. Back through the grape arbor are the veggie gardens, and in this first bed, I'm kind of obsessed with how gorgeous these cabbage are, and these will be ready for picking next week. The wildness here behind the cabbage are tiller radish cover crop, which is bolted. I leave them in because pollinators love the blooms, but as I'll show you in a second, they've become a little out of control. Behind, I've got a basil trial and a patty pan squash trial I'm growing out. Bush beans are doing well. But here's the trouble. There are actually eggplant and peppers under all that radish growth. After a quick cleanup, you can actually see them in here. The peppers have gotten a little leggy from being shaded by the radish, but they should recover quickly. In the next bed, we've got collards, chard, kale, broccoli, which needs removed, cabbage, beets. The beets are being picked and thinned out. Here you can see when I did the first picking, trying to remove the largest roots first, and then I'll allow the smaller beets to remain here, size up, and be ready for picking in a couple of weeks. And over here, mom's row of San Marzano tomatoes looks great, but behind them is a mess. I'm in the process of building new hugel culture beds in this area because this has been a problematic spot for us for a while. We're having a heck of a time getting the Canadian thistle under control and the tiller radish cover crop I planted in the spring has gone to seed. Can you see all these drying seed pods here? At this point, I'm just gonna let these go and have a second radish cover crop for the fall. In this bed, we're finishing up with broccoli and cauliflower, and I have pepper, eggplant, and pole beans planted. But I'm having a lot of issues with thistles in here too. But after cleanup, you can actually see the plants. And I realized I still have a big, beautiful head of clementine cauliflower in here. I'm shocked it has held so well in this heat. This bed is primarily onions and potatoes. This is the first year that onions have not done well for me. Between weather stress, competition from thistles, and me just picking a poor planting location, these poor things have struggled all season. A disproportionate number of these have bolted, I'm guessing primarily from heat stress. You can see the flowering stalk here. And these bulbs won't get much larger and they won't store well. In the back is my corn planting. I was worried about this corn for a while. I planted a cover crop of radish and alfalfa, and it didn't exactly work the way I planned. 
The radishes didn't die after I cut them back, and I ended up crawling on hands and knees between these rows, pulling up cover crop. When I got that cover crop and the weeds removed, I realized that the corn was really struggling. Now that was a couple of weeks ago, and we've had some decent rain and warmth since. The corn has put on some nice growth and is looking better, but so have the weeds. So a few days ago, I hoed down the rows and dad and I top dressed this with composted manure. I'm hoping to get my hay mulch on here soon. Past dad's blackberry patch to the garlic bed. Most of this was harvested a week or two ago. I've got one soft neck variety out here still. The rest is in the granary curing. And a late planting of tomatoes. These were planted over a month later than I'd normally transplant tomatoes, but this was some trial seed I received late. I thought it might make a fun succession planting test. And this last row is just an overgrown weed and volunteer tomato mess that I've got to get cleaned up. Heading back up front, Dad's apple trees are loaded this year. We're planning a new garden bed in this area, so Dad's got the tarps out getting ready to solarize the lawn. Here is my winter squash planting. This was another late planting. Normally I'd plant mid to late May, and these went out mid to late June. I'll leave that insect netting on till they start blooming to try to protect them from insect pests as long as possible. Another tarp solarizing weeds, which will soon be moved to the other side of this bed. And finally, the main season tomato planting. These were transplanted the third week of May, and after a slow start, thanks to unseasonably cool weather, they are finally putting on some nice growth. I can't wait for fresh tomatoes. So that pretty much wraps up what is going on in my gardens in July. If you enjoyed today's garden tour and cleanup, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Grow Fully with Jenna, for more garden updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.